Hello guys, uh, welcome to our next video. Uh, in this video, we are going to learn about use effect. Uh, so basically, it's another hook and uh, another another most important hook, uh, just like use, use state. It is widely used and you should know it and you will be using it a lot in your application, I guess, uh, most, uh, most probably in your uh, every React application, you will be using this hook. So let's see what it does. Let's just see the bare minimum example. First of all, so let me create a new component for this test. I will call it test use effect or this. I can name it anything. So, and let's just stitch it with our app.js component so that we are sure that it is working fine. Let's see. Okay, that is okay, that is fine. Now we are going to introduce our use effect hook. Okay, so let me just show you what it looks like, what's the syntax is, then we will understand what it does. Okay, so that's 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 in that manner you will understand it better. Okay, so you will write use effect, it will be auto imported from React. If not, you can do it manually, and then you will uh, write it as a function. It's a function. And inside this function, you give a callback. You give a function in it, basically. You give an arrow function. We will use an arrow function as its input. So we will again write an arrow function. So see, uh, pay, uh, pay attention. So you see, I am just writing an arrow function over there, okay? This is an arrow function. Use effect uh, is a function which takes a function. So we have written an arrow function over here. And here I can write anything. For example, I am in use effect. Now, if I save it and let's see on Chrome, so you see it is getting printed if I reload, reload it. So you just, you can just ignore this. Uh, you can assume that it's coming one time since it's, I have mentioned it again, that React uh, does this two times in development mode, but it doesn't do it in production mode. So if you can, you can see that it is only one time. So basically what, what, what you see is, so what you can notice is use spec is some hook, it's some utility by React, uh, and it is a function, for example, and it will run whatever it is when a when a component on a screen whenever a component is loaded. And another interesting thing is about uh, use effect is it will also run whenever a state variable is changed. So first of all, we will create a state variable. Let's say uh, use state, and we will make it. Uh, its initial value to be zero and we can say the data is and we will also use uh, we'll also add a button and we can change it uh, on we can use the on click handler to change its value and we will again give it an arrow function and inside we can say set data to be data plus one it will just increment this value but also notice what will happen in the console so if i click on it so it's, it's one but it's also printed i mean use effect again if i click on it again you see it's two if i click on it again it says three if i click on it again it says four so i can instead of doing i mean use effect i can say the value of data is and let's just say data. So here you can see use effect will run every time four five six seven eight every time whenever uh whenever this is that is because of the hot reloading it's automatically getting updated updated this output uh so so it's basically does it, it renders every time when a state variable is changed but now the, uh, the scenario i can give you a scenario we can uh, like we can have multiple use states so and if that variable changes so will that use effect run again let's see and the answer is yes it will run again, but let's just uh, write it. And we want to do the other thing. Uh, like we don't want to, we just want to run it when only the data changes, not the set data changes. So let's just, okay, let me put it in a new line. Okay, that looks better. And I will create a copy for data two. Okay, data two is data two, and I will change that data to on click to button. So for example, now this is data one and this is data two. Now you see this is incrementing on data two and uh, this is 
when I click on it, the value of data is six. When I click on it again, the value of data is seven. This use effect is running when data is changing, but this use effect is also running when data two is changing and we don't want it. We don't, we just want it to run when data is changed because we do not, this is not showing our a new value, it's just showing the same thing again and again. So how do I prevent it? Okay, I just want this use effect hook to run only when our specific uh, state variable changes. So uh, otherwise by default, use effect will run on every, on every state variable change. Okay, so that's the behavior, that's the nature of use effect. So we want, we have, how do we prevent it? How do we make sure that it only runs when data, is, uh, when a specific variable changes, for example, in our case, uh, we want to run it when data variable changes, so we will pass a dependency array and we will write data in it. So just, it's a second argument of use effect. You can see first was this, this callback function, this arrow function, whatever you want to call it. And the second argument is an array. It's a dependency array, okay? So for example, let's just, leave it here for example let's just leave it here we can create a new component to to make it simpler so let's just create a new component we can call it dependency array for gs and and and, and let's create a copy of it and paste it over here and we can call it Depend that C. Yeah. Okay. And I will rename it as well. Dependency here. Yeah. And now instead of rendering app to GS use effect, I will render dependency here. Yeah. The output will be same. This is working fine and this is working fine again. Okay, because I just copy pasted it in this component. Now what we were trying to do is we we will add this array, as I mentioned, we will add a, an empty array. Uh, add in uh, brackets for the array and we will add data over here. So we are bounding this use effect to run only when the value of data changes. So we will come over here and reload. And when I click on it, so you see there is one, two, three, four, which was working earlier as well. But when I click on it, should not repeat. So yeah, okay. So the value is updating, but use effect is not running. This console log area is not updating, okay? So that's how we tell, we prevent use effect to run every time when this value changes. And if you want that it should run on a multiple state variables, so you can put a comma and you can write data two. So it will run uh, it, it will run every time in a data or data two. It's an or between these values. Okay. Dependency array takes the variables. List of variables takes the list of variables and whenever any one of them updates the use effect will run again and it runs after the update after after this component is rendered okay after this component is rendered means this first time is run and then uh, then it will see okay data or data to change or not if it change it then it will run okay now you can see if you click on it and if i click on it again then it is it has again started to run so that is same. Now uh, let's just say, let's just create a new, let me remove it now, let's keep it as it is. And yeah, it's not running now. So now let's just create a empty dependency array. Empty dependency array. So now I want to show you what happened in that case. Okay. And that is another useful scenario. And uh, we can say, we will pass a function over here and we will and the second argument will pass empty i have a an empty dependency array okay now let's just save it and we will call we will use this we can comment this we can use our empty array and we can come over here and reload and you see, I have an empty dependency array. And now uh, let's just introduce some state and a button again, and we will change that state variable and see if this use effect is running again or not, okay? So first we will create a state variable, for example, data and set data. And then we will write use state as usual, and we will render its value data is as we did previously 
with the other two components and we'll add this button as well. We can call it, we can name it as change data and we'll pass an on click handler and we will pass a function arrow function over here and we will change the value of data like data plus one. Let's see. Now we will when if I click on it, the value is changing, but you see the use effect is not running. Okay. The empty dependency array means that it will just run only empty. It will only run on the first mark. Okay. And the component is mounted for the first time. Empty dependency array means the use effect will only will only run once on first time mounting of the component. Okay, so that's a fancy way of calling that it just runs only once when the component at first time. Okay, if I reload it, so I have a, you can see two times it's just because we are in a uh, the development mode, it will be like runs two times. So, but yeah, so it's not running again and again when a state variable, any of the state variable changes in the component. Okay, now uh, let me show you uh, another example. Let me go through it. Rendering of the component when a set state is called, it, it will run again and again when a set state is called and until, until and unless. Uh, you give the second argument and you define which on which variables in specific variable you want to call you want use effect to run with no with no second argument it means it will run every time which second argument will run only when we define the variable on which we want to our use effect to run uh, and then we also learned with empty second array empty dependency array which means it will only run our use effect to, for the first time only and then we learn uh, no we need to learn returning from use effect so yeah there can be some subscriptions in your, uh, let's say, now we will create an, uh, another example for return from user okay? Let's just call it return example for GS. What will happen, uh, let me give you a situation in which, in which, for example, in which you, you have subscribe to some event okay by subscription you mean you have uh, enabled some event and it's showing something and if you if your component go out of the screen it will still remain subscribe and you want to cancel that subscription so what does that mean for example i can give you an example for example if you have running a set interval function so for example we can say const my i'm just naming it because I will need it later. That's why set interval in here, you give the time in seconds. Example, let's say for two seconds. And I can say I am on uh, the I am mounted. Okay. On the screen. So for example, if I run this component, let me comment it again. Uh, why not I add our first example as well and comment it? So we see that we have covered, we have added these examples. Now we are going to test to return example. Now we see that if I come over here and you see, I am mounted on the screen, it says it's running, it's, it's just keep on running again and again. Just forget about just don't bother about that it's not synchronized it's, it's random so oh so it's it's rendering two times so we leave it so now what we want to do it what we want i want to show you is if i come over here in elements and uh, you see return example is over here okay this component is basically this one and uh and i want to hide this component and like for example i can have a button and I say remove component or show component or hide component. Basically, remove, it will remove this component and it will not show it. So that is called also a conditional rendering. That so so I will I we can do this by creating a state variable in this component. For example, it's show or is open a show. For example, show and set show. Use the state and let's say first initially we want to set it to be true and now we can toggle this component based on this check 
show equal equal to true, then show this as show null. So not showing though. You don't have to show anything, you can do none. So there, there, there is this one way of conditional rendering, and there is this another way of doing this and and so they both mean the same thing. So let's just go with this example, okay? If show equal equal to true, then return example will show if so. Okay, I am over here, I reload. So I let me inspect over here. So we have this because the default value is true. But now we want another uh a button basically which can toggle this this is state variable. So Toggle, toggle basically means if it's showing, you hide it. If it's hidden, show it. Toggle, toggle the okay. And so on click, we can simply, as we saw earlier, we can do that show is equal to not show. Basically, we pass not show to it. Now, if it's showing, it will. If it's show is true, it will make it false. If it's false, it will make it true. And if I click on it, you see that component is removed. When I click on it, that component is mounted again. If you click on it, remove. So now let me reload it and come over here. Use sorry in the console. You see that this is like rendering again and again. So this is coming from return example. This is coming from over here, our interval. Okay. This is which is running after every two seconds. So this is running, but I have hidden it. Now you see this is this is still running. Okay, our component is no more in the in this oh, no more over here okay if i click on it it's it comes again but uh, now uh, this this did not stop so how this because we have subscribed this event we want to unsubscribe from this event when this component is no more on the screen then how do you do it there is a special case there is a smash, uh, there is a special way to handle this uh, which is just writing a return and uh, giving it a callback function okay so when it return and we are giving the game get a function, we can add an arrow function. It will run uh, everything when uh, whatever you want to run when the component is removed from the screen. So we basically just want to clear this interval. There is we have a clear interval method which will, be, which will stop this. So we will use it in this return because return will run when a component is removed from the screen. So we can we will write clear interval and we will say my interval. So yeah, and we will save it. Now you see if I, so let's just reload it. And you see I am mounted on the screen. It's running two, three, four. And if I click on it, and if I click on it, so it's hidden now. And let's see if it is running or not. So yeah, it's no more running. Our interval is no more running. Okay, I am, yeah, I can write over here console.log component is unmounting uh, or we are getting removed from this screen. You can call it that way, this thing as well. So you see, uh, let me refresh it. So first of first time it's, it's running this, this is for testing, you can ignore this. So I am mounted on the screen, this is running, I am mounted on the screen. When I click on it, the then you see component is unmounted, getting removed and this timer is also stopped. Because that that return only works. It will only run when you are uh, returning from that. Basically, when your uh, your component is removed from that. And uh, so yeah, that was about it. And basically, so that's how you put uh, close cancel the subscriptions if you have any in your component. So you will use it. And or you or you move, uh, whatever or if there is anything you want to do something when you remove the component from the screen, so you will put it in this return and inside and then you give a function and whatever the logic is you will write inside the body of that function so yeah i guess that was all about use effect and uh, yeah i guess i have covered this and yes there can be multiple use states since we saw that there can be multiple use states there can be multiple use effects as well you can try that on your own and you can pass the empty dependency array and sometimes there can be an argument in that so yeah so that's how that's that was about the use effect for this video and it was a comprehensive one we covered uh, basic to advanced examples of use effect. There can be some uh, more integrities as well. You that you might, might encounter, but that but that but that's a very good starting point, and we covered a lot. Okay, so I guess that's it. See you in the next video. Don't don't forget to join our Discord community, and uh, I will see you in the next video.